Oh, it's cold this morning. Ah, what's up, guys? Good morning. Oh, man. All right. Really quick before we get into today's video. We got content coming for you guys. Let me show you something. We got the missing link to the motor, finally. I'm going to drop these off next week. And we can have content for the rebuild. A lot of you guys that are just catching on, um, I am rebuilding my first car. It's been down for about 10 years. And my plan this year was is to debut it at SEMA this year. But uh, today, we have a feature lined up. So we're going to head down to Vista and have a feature with uh, my boy Russ. So let's get into it. Russell. This is my 95 Acura Integra DC2. Um, car is pretty special to me. Uh, only thing I had that stuck with me through a lot of tough times and uh, had it for like 25 years. Uh, this is it. It's a little track circuit, cor uh, circuit course car. Um, Galaxy Gray. Uh, what? Uh, Galaxy Gray paint from uh, House of Color. Um, APR mirrors, carbon sunroof delete from Canada that this guy shipped me, um, Voltex wing, waited like eight months for that thing, it was like two Gs, that was that was like 10 years ago. We'll get you a lot of downforce at the track. Yeah, and then uh, this was a, a GSR, so it uh, used to have an amber amber turn lanes, I think I, those are just off of a, either a newer 99 Integra with the all red uh, all red lenses. Yeah. Um, stock rear bumper. I mean, everything's pretty much stock. It's uh, uh, yeah, no real, no real error. I want to get those PCI side uh, side skirts, but yeah. I haven't gotten those yet. We just did a uh, Cybon uh, carbon roof or carbon uh, carbon hood rather, and then uh, this is a PCI splitter uh, splitter bracket, and uh, I think it's checkered motorsports air dam. Um, and then just a JDM, obviously a Type R front end conversion that me and my buddy Dickie did. Just in the garage, like all just garage built, you know. Uh, definitely helped being able to build a car like this when you don't have to pay for a lot for labor. So you got your friends to help you. <laughs> yeah. But um, but yeah, that's it, man. That's uh that's the outside, and then you got nine four nine, uh, fifteen by nine plus thirty fives all the way around square, and we just did two forty five. Uh, Tires up front, 225 in the back, so it's a stagger setup now. Nice. Uh, that was just new. That's uh, I've only had one track day on that, but it did well. Um, AP Racing, uh, ASR, big brake kit up front. Uh, it does have uh, RSX base rear caliper, so they're I think they're like the same size as a Type R without having to go five lug. That was a good, uh, a good even, uh, uh, easy uh, upgrade to make the brakes more balanced. So the RSX rears. It's got RSX rears, yeah. You have to turn the caliper upside down okay. uh, to mount it. So when you have to bleed them, you actually have to take the caliper off the car, turn it right side up so the air comes out properly. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's and then um, it's got Type R rear lower control arms, ASR subframe brace, Coney Race shocks, uh, hard race uh, bushings everywhere, uh -huh. um, hard race upper camber control arms. Um, man, I don't know. There's... You start getting into it and there's just more and more yeah. stuff that you think that you don't think about uh messing with hard race rear, rear camber adjusters um i think that's pretty much it for the suspension it uh it's a, it's a I'd, I'd consider more of a budget build but it's tried trusted and true and it's done it's done really well the car handles really really well so uh, handles too good you know it, it <laughs> yeah. can be driven faster and i just you know it's tough to get uh get the guts to keep the gas pedal down but that's what we're always working on it's a hobby yeah and, and it's uh it's a lot of fun so tell me uh since you do time attack and road racing what actually got you into you know a honda is it you know something with you know 
friends or just you know you bought the car and then you know you saw your friends uh, building their cars i would say all of that and above it's uh affordable when you get into something that you know it arguably costs a lot of money especially to do it like over and over and over again yeah you do wear out tires yeah you do wear out brakes you got to pay for the track day you got to pay for fuel that's all right off the top assuming you don't break anything and everybody that i know we've blown engines blown transmissions all that kind of stuff so it uh it can get expensive but hondas are arguably affordable but now nowadays the parts i mean they're so rare so expensive it's it's uh still going to be the affordable route i mean obviously if you go towards something like a, a bmw or a porsche you got to have big bucks and then you know when that stuff breaks it gets even more expensive yes but yeah it was uh i don't know i had a 64 uh mercury comet that was fun and when i was when i was a kid and then I had like a Ford Probe GT. Oh, wow. And then my buddy took me for a ride in an Integra. And I go, what the hell am I not having one of these for? So then I <laughs> saved up and saved up. I bought this thing cash when I was like 18 years old for like nine grand. And it was used. It had 66,000 miles on it. And I've had it ever since. Now it's got, uh, I don't know, on the chassis, it's a two, 216. Oh, wow. Yeah. But um, I don't know. My buddy had a VR6 back in the day. Those are really fun. Yeah. Uh, really fast. And uh, I just got the GSR and just you know turboed it. Blew it up, turboed it, uh, rebuilt the engine, built it, blew it up a year and a half later, did it one more time. And then my friend Dickie was like, man, he goes, I ain't helping you fix that thing no more. It's been, <laughs> it was always, it ran, when it ran good, it ran good. And then yeah. when it didn't, it freaking broke. So we did a, we did a case swap on it and that was been, uh, it's been 12 years and the motor uh, just won't break. So I love it. Nice. So we have everything exterior wise looks good. I love the paint. And like we were talking before, like I seen your car at Dickie's garage at his shop years ago and with the feature i did last week with shay he uh he reached out to me he's like hey my buddy russ wants to do a feature as well and it's funny because you know we have mutual friends and just seeing the car like i love 949s just whether it's a track car or street car they're dope wheels the front end always gets me i've always been a lover for itr front ends yep um the hood looks amazing it's just the, the color combo with the with the hood and the wing goes amazing um but what's going on in the interior so on the inside, um, you know, stock still kind of full interior, still yeah. has the carpet. Okay. Um, let me take the key out real quick so it's that beeping shit. Um, it's got uh, JDM uh, door panels because the stock ones, the the leather or whatever, the, the pleather, I should say, uh, yeah. peels up right here. You can see it's barely just starting a little bit right there. Okay. But um, uh, Recaro Hans race seat, uh, Recaro, uh, what I think those are, Profi SPGs. Uh, Passenger bucket, auto power roll bar, Schroth six point harness. Um, it does have obviously you have to get a upgraded fuel pump to make it make it work good. Uh, Momo steering wheel. Uh, what is that? Works bell quick release ASR hub extension. Mm -hmm. um, driving position is just awesome, man. This thing just rips. It's it so looks, much fun. It looks very comfortable. I've always been, I always wondered about these uh, this, the driver's seat just because like you know obviously in the track you know you have your helmet. Your head hits a little bit. Yep. Yeah, the, the, the helmet did kind of start messing it up right here because I do have the Hans device, but okay, that's, that's just part of it. So that doesn't hurt anything. It does have a um, uh, fire fire extinguisher? Some it says some special kind where it's not uh, that white chalk that powder that comes out. I guess that can really damage your electrical if you do have a fire. Oh, okay. So that's I don't know. That's next thing is going to be like a full on cage, and then I'll, I'll probably get like a real fire suppression. But that's uh. That's another day, another store. We're, we're, we're building the K24 supercharge for it. So it's oh, going to be uh, try to keep up with Shay. <laughs> nice. What's your uh, best lap time so far? at uh, was it? 58.4 at Butt Willow. Uh, I think I did a 59 flat at Chukwala. Um, you know, we've been to Spring Mountain out in Pahrump. I've been to Laguna Seca a couple times. Mm -hmm. We just went to Thunder Hill uh, up in NorCal. We went to Sonoma for two days. That was Sick. insane. Yeah. Uh, I'd love to go back there and do that again. Uh, so I've been uh, to Chuckwalla, uh, Willow Springs, Big Willow, Streets of Willow. Um, you know, we've been all over the place, man. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Nice. That's cool. Yeah, I've seen I follow a couple of guys that, that go up to the track like, yo, it's John. Uh, type of Jose. Yeah, those are all cool guys, man. Good, good for the whole car culture and community because they keeping everybody going. Yeah, and yeah, they, they always like, got good parts for good deals, so that yeah, help, that helps. Yeah, they definitely have some good deals. Every now and then I hit, I hit up a uh, yo, which I was like, hey, I, I think one time he had a, a CTR tranny, and I'm like, 
you want to trade for a JDMP 16 shiny? He's like, no, I just want cash. I'm like, damn it. Yeah. <laughs> but the, the deals, they come up really quick and they sell really fast. They sell really quick. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Um, so everyone probably wants to know under the hood. Yeah. Yeah. We can go to that part. We can go to that part. Let's see here. So like I said, garage built, uh, I found some paint that matched the, uh, kind of matched the outside, just rattle canned, uh, yeah. sanded it down, um, ABS delete, Odyssey battery, uh, stock K20 Z1, just header intake exhaust and K-Pro, man. Oh, wow. Power steering delete, um, you know, a little hybrid racing intake, Mishimoto uh, aluminum radiator. K-tuned, what is that little uh, Hall Effect TPS sensor? Because the TPS sensor failed on me. Okay. Uh, Hot Sport mounts. It's got a uh, six-speed, you know, just uh, K20Z1 trans with uh, M Factory clutch type LSD uh, spoon 5.0 final drive. Okay. Um, stock axles, man. I've had uh, a bunch of problems with, I won't say any names of aftermarket axles that have failed. Okay. Uh, for whatever reason. And I got OEM base RSX axles in there and they work. And they fit fine and they work great and i haven't had a problem with them for years yeah that's what i heard a lot with a lot of k-series like swaps just the base rsx stuff it's just perfect i used to have a tsx and the axles went bad on that and i mean AutoZone or whoever napa swap them in swap them out and i always had like a vibration problem and then okay. you go to the dealer yeah to get a good one and it's 550 Hang bucks man oh, yeah. that was with a discount yeah oh, wow but you slap that in I, I was tired of popping them in popping them out trying to get ones that worked yeah too much time and labor you know and so yeah. i finally bit the bullet put it in and it, it worked great so i've just if you can find a set used or new i wouldn't even go to you know autozone or nap but just find some oem ones and slap them in you won't have any problems yeah you can never go wrong with oem yeah it's if you find the oem stuff you know where your money you know where money goes and it always fits right so yeah i know a lot of like the um oem honda websites a lot of them are just like parts are just getting discontinued left and right yeah so it's yep. just getting it's getting harder to maintain the cars but you know building a car like this like You've had it for what 20, 20 years 25 years yeah and you know obviously parts are like you know starting to whittle away so finding something brand new it's like a rare it's a rare thing to find near impossible yeah but when you find it you're like you know the price might be what would we say uh for the cow you know it's 500 bucks for a cow yeah but back then like i told you it was probably 250 or 200 bucks oh man you used to be able to get k20 or uh, k series transmissions for 600 bucks 800 bucks maybe a thousand bucks for a nice one yeah and i just bought a i mean a used five speed yeah for a freaking i think it was like 800 dollars, and i couldn't find anyone anywhere else and I, now i still have to build that thing oh, dang. to get ready for the k24 so it's going to be a, a little process but yeah they're, they're so reliable you know you yeah. can beat the snot out of it and it and it just won't break man yeah i love you're, it you're like the fifth or sixth person that's told me that case a case swap just a bone stock motor with bolt-ons make about 200 220 yeah i think this made two 246 at church um and again i it's been in there 12 years i had it tuned once i haven't messed with it i'm not gonna yeah uh so the i'm gonna do a whole complete changeover transmission engine everything out and in and new computer and uh, just make it a, a swap so okay maybe a k20 swap coming for sale soon you know? nice nice yeah. is there anything else well since you already have a k20 that's i'm not gonna ask that like oh is there anything else you're gonna do it but you already have a k24 that you're gonna yeah we're gonna, we're gonna do uh, a merc racing uh, uh i think it's a 1900 or 2100 uh supercharger mm -hmm. on a k24 just again stock motor uh yeah. jdm used engine for thousand bucks so if something breaks i'm just going to swap the engine and yeah. put it right back in nice makes it easy yeah yeah um what well, fuel, fuel pump are running I that you this is a uh, wall bro okay yeah and then stock inje injectors stock injectors um yeah i mean just k-tune fuel rail power steering pulley delete k-tune header i mean yeah. it's just basic stuff this is all Stuff that again i bought uh about 12 years ago just haven't had to haven't had to replace it yeah um coilovers i know a lot of guys run coney yellows yeah ground control yep um what are you running on yours that's what this has got oh sick yeah it's got uh, coney race with the ground control coilovers and then you can actually uh get a type r or nsx top bushing and drill it out a little bit mm -hmm. and it um it really uh locks this top hat in Oh, it's nice. something they come with. They come with just an all rubber bushing. Well, there's actually like a metal reinforcement on the Type R slash NSX one, but it, with the Coney Race, you have to drill out the shock tower because it's a little bit bigger. Okay. Nice. Yeah, there's always like little tricks that, you know, if you had to switch to get a part from a different chassis, yep. just that little like drilling something out or just honing something out just to make it fit. Sometimes you got to make it fit. And it works. Yep. Yeah. Yep. 
That's dope. Yep. Um, so you said you're gonna do a full cage because we have a full point now. We're gonna end up going with a six point. Yeah, that's that's another thing, but that's a whole that's later different ball ball of wax. Yeah, I gotta, you know, that's a couple years down the road. Maybe <laughs> when I got more space, I need to want to get a different house, bigger garage, stuff yeah. like that. I'm I'm running out of space, yeah. so it's uh. All in good time, though. All yeah. in good time. Fun, fun to tinker. Yeah, definitely. What does the car weigh uh, currently? Right now, with me in it, it's twenty five twenty. So, okay. what would that be like? Twenty three fifty. Yeah, twenty three fifty with a full tank of gas, just bare the way it sits. So you could probably pull. You know, the seat doesn't weigh much, but you know, pull the that the, the door panels, the carpet, all the other crap that's in there that I don't need. Um, you know, you might get it down to twenty two, twenty two fifty, something like that. Yeah, which you know. These things are momentum cars, man. You get them on track, and you know the Porsches and the Beamers. If you don't know exactly what you're doing, uh, we're gonna get by it. You know, it's, <laughs> it's fun. So we got like I don't know six or eight of my friends that we all go and yeah. and just uh, terrorize all these people out there. I want to say like ten years ago, I would say you had a, always had a ton of Hondas at the track yeah. when I first started. Um, but nowadays, there 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 there's fewer out there. So yeah. it's uh it's all it's always a fun time though. Yeah, it's crazy. Just like how the industry like back then it was b-series everything yep now yep it's slowly becoming obsolete where parts are hard to find like I, I told you building my my motors you know i gotta scrounge around to find something luckily I, someone had a part got it for real cheap k-series stuff is slowly just it's getting, getting tough to, to find man it's yeah. getting tough to find at least clean stuff so yeah i'm, I'm sure those jdm k24s will be out there forever but you know, you got to do a bunch of different little things to get those to work too, and yeah. move, remove parts, add parts, do this and do that. And so that's a learning uh, learning experience for me too. Yeah. Um, but nowadays you got YouTube and the internet, so yeah. and K and K series forums, so it makes it really easy to. Yeah, the forums uh, they people, go such a long way because if you can't find on YouTube or if you don't have someone that has the experience, go on the forum. If you can just go through a thread and find it, you'll find the answer really quick. I mean, that's what I do. I'll, I'll go on Google. It'll come up with NDP or, or Honda Tech. Yep. And that's usually where you find the answers. A lot of times, you know, someone has probably done it before once or twice, and you figure out how to do it that way. Yeah, there's a couple OG guys out there. This guy, Catman, he's always oh yeah, always down to help, always super supportive. So, yeah. yeah. Catman's been in the- There's people the, that'll help you. Yeah, there's guys that have been into the industry heavily, and they're still heavily into it, and their knowledge just goes so far. Yeah, absolutely. And they're always helping, you know, helping the guys that are in it, guys that are getting into it. Because, you know, I, I told my buddy a couple weeks back, you know, for the OGs, like, we had to find out the hard way. Yeah. We'd break something. Oh. Like, oh you, know, you, you get pissed off. Like, dude, the, stop, the, the store's closed. Where you try and go? If it's on the weekend, you're like, all right, well, I got to either find a bolt that'll hold it temporarily. Or call or, a buddy to help. Yeah. Yeah. And, yep. um, you know, that's, that's the one thing I always love about the, the community and the culture is the guys that are really into it, they're always willing to, you know, give extra hand. Or give you any kind of uh, a knowledge, or even just like, hey, troubleshoot it this way. Yep. And you're like, dude, I didn't even think of that about that. And you're like, you're like, thank you. Like by the grace of God, you're like, dude, thank you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and get the car running. Um, is there any shout outs you want to do uh, really quick before we cut the video out? Yeah, my buddy Dicky. I'll give a shout out to Shay and my buddy Sean. Okay. All my Honda boys, Jeff, Vince, uh, Mark. Is there? That's my tight crew right now. Nice. So yeah, we're uh, we're getting ready to shake some things up pretty soon. Oh okay, okay, nice. Also, you guys, Dicky, I'll put his informa information at the at the, in the description below. Anthony Dicky, he's in Arizona, does maintenance, does repairs. Check him out. Thanks you, thank you for uh, you know spending some time today to show me this beautiful car. Um, let's do some uh, some roller shots and show you guys you know how this car gets down at least. How it looks on the road. I know looking at it's one thing, but seeing it on the road is always amazing. Let's do it. But again, thank you again, Russ, for uh, taking some time out of your morning. Anytime. And, uh, we'll see you again, hopefully, when the, the supercharged motor's in. We'll do another one. Yes. Okay, man. <laughs> thank you. Deal.
I've seen, like, I mean, you always see videos of guys just driving off fast, not the right tires, and it's right off, yep. into, off into the sidewalk or in a ditch. I had, a, um, like, a brake bias issue. I had the wrong proportion valve on there for years. Uh -huh. And so it would always lock up the front brakes. Like, yeah. I'm, like, struggling. I'd have to, like, baby them. Finally, we did that, man. So I've only really had, like, two or three track days now with, like, brakes as they should be. So I'm kind of, like, still, like, relearning the car. Oh, okay. Oh, my God.